light callers stir elemental storms and souls lost the putrid waters of swamp and bog. Only the blight caller may grant them frenzied reprieve, rousing their spirits with mystical totems to swarm their foes with elemental fury. Meanwhile, spore wardens are masters of nature, who summon tornadoes and launch volleys of arcane arrows into enemy lines alongside their toxin spewing mushroom companion. What's up, YouTube? Zero here. And today I have an epic build of the Blight Caller Spore Warden in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. In this video, I'll go through the skills of the Blight Caller Spore Warden with a Blight Caller focus. Then I'll get into the stats of the Blight Caller Spore Warden build. Then I'll talk about the synergies of the skills that I'm utilizing from this Blight Caller Spore Warden. Then I'll talk about some of the must have equipment that you need to enhance this build and make it amazing. Then I'll get into some other equipment that I like to use, but it's not necessarily required for the build. Then at the end of the video, I'll talk about that equipment and other options that you can use for this Blight Caller Spore Warden build with the Blight Caller Focus. Now before I get into it, I do want to say if you do enjoy this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more Tiny Tina's Wonderlands content. I do a bunch of other RPGs and I'm getting into Soul Hackers too, so feel free to check those out as well. There's a lot of RPGs coming up in the fall, so be prepared for those. Without further ado, let's talk about the skills of the Blight Caller Spore Warden build with the Blight Caller Focus. Let's get into the skills of the Blight Caller Spore Warden build. This is a Blight Caller focused build, so I'm going to start on the Blight Caller side. Having that class equipped gives the Fate Maker Whisper of Rot. Applying a status effect increases elemental damage for a duration. And that's going to play nicely with the build. The ability is going to be the Bog Totem. This gets multiple charges. This periodically creates an elemental Bog Spirit that seek out enemies dealing ability damage and explode on impact. And the damage type is going to be based on the Fate Maker's weapon. Also getting a kill is going to partially restore the duration of the Bog Totem. Then in the first row of the Blight Color, every skill is going to be maxed out. So the first is going to be Virulence, Status Effect Chance, and Duration are both going to be increased. Geist in the Shell, Gun Critical Hits are going to have a chance to create a homing Poison Bog Spirit that seeks out nearby enemies dealing poison damage and exploding on impact. And finally Wraith Mail in this first row, which is a kill skill, a portion of the Fate Maker's Maximum Ward is going to be restored upon a kill. In the next row, we have... Hex Machina. The fire rate is going to be increased for the Fate Maker. Then, only two points in Flawless Edge. The Fate Maker gains increased damage dealt based on how full their ward is. So the more ward we have, the more damage the Fate Maker is going to deal. This plays nicely with Wraith Mail, so we can increase the maximum ward capacity upon kill, dealing more damage. Then in our next row, there are two skills. Amped up, whenever the Fate Maker applies a lightning status effect, his movement speed is increased and a percentage of his maximum war capacity is restored per second for a duration. So again, playing into our ward really giving us a lot of bonuses. So we're getting Flawless Edge, which couples nicely with Amped Up, and then Wraith Mail also coupling nicely, and Bogged Down, dealing non-status effect poison damage, has a chance to create a Water Nova soaking all enemies. We've seen this before in my builds with Cape of Tides, so you're going to be dealing increased lightning and frost damage, which plays very nicely with Amped Up, because we're going to be dealing lightning damage, and also plays nicely with Geist in the Shell, because we're dealing poison damage. Then in our second to last row, we have Toxicity. Whenever the Fate Maker applies a poison status effect, his critical hit damage, companion damage, and action skill cooldown rate are all increased for a duration. I love getting my Bog Totem as often as possible, as well as dealing extra critical hits, so that's going to be nice. And finally, our Spirit Swarm. 
Applying a status effect to an enemy creates a spirit swarm companion that will seek out and damage nearby enemies, dealing status effect damage of the applied status effects damage type. While the spirit swarm is active, its duration is partially restored after applying a status effect. Applying a stronger status effect fully refreshes its duration and updates the spirit swarm's damage dealt in damage type based on the applied status effect. So of course, we're focused on status effects on this build, so that's going to be extremely nice. So now let's go over to the Spore Warden. You've probably seen it before, but we know we have the Mushroom Companion, which deals poison damage, playing nicely into our build, and also gives us that Mushroom Companion. In our first row, Eagle Eye, we're just going to be increasing the gun damage and gun handling. In our next row, Bullseye, which gun critical hit chance and companion critical hit chance are both going to be increased. Affinity, our ability damage is going to be increased, which plays nice for our bog totem. And finally, Quiver of the Holding, the magazine size is increased and you regenerate ammo over time. So now we've talked about the build, the skills, let's get into the stats of our Spore Warden Blightcaller. Now that I've talked about the skills of the Blight Caller Spore Warden build, time to get into the stats. It was already noted that the Blight Caller is going to be dealing a lot of status effects. So increasing the status effect damage since the Fate Maker is going to be dealing a lot of status effects just makes sense. So max out the Wisdom Tree to be dealing as much status effect damage as possible. Then Atonement. The Bog Totem is going to be dealing a lot of damage for the Fate Maker. On top of that, you're going to be able to get a Bog Totem a lot because you have the two charges. So I love the Bog Totem dealing a lot of damage and getting my Bog Totem as quickly as possible. So max out the Atonement as well so your action skill cooldown rate is as quick as possible. The last stat, the Fate Maker wants to be dealing a lot of damage. We're also going to be dealing a lot of critical hits, so increasing our critical hit damage as far as possible after investing in Wisdom and Atonement is going to be the right move, so the Fate Maker can kill enemies as quickly as possible. Now that we've talked about the skills and the stats, let's get into some more gameplay and talk about why this build really works well with each other and can completely decimate enemies in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. It's time to talk more about the synergies of the Blight Caller Spore Warden with a Blight Caller Focus build. Let's talk about the skill synergies. Bullseye from the Spore Warden tree, which increases gun critical hit chance, works really well with a few of the skills from the Blight Caller tree. First, it works well with Geist in the Shell, which gun critical hits have a chance to create a homing poison bog spirit so of course increasing our gun critical hit chance with bullseye is going to allow the blight caller spore warden to have more poison bog spirits floating around on top of that bullseye also works well with toxicity toxicity applying a poison status effect increases your gun critical hit damage so of course having gun critical hit damage increased by applying poison status effects and you're getting more gun critical hit chances with bullseye you're going to be dealing a lot more damage now amped up and wraith mail both work really well with flawless edge a reminder flawless edge you gain increased damage dealt based on how full your ward is of course we only have two points in that but you're still gonna be increasing that damage dealt with the higher ward wraith mail is a kill skill which restores a percentage of the ward every time you get a kill and then amped up which i really love this skill applying a lightning status effect increases your movement speed and causes the fate maker to regenerate a percentage of ward so of course both amped up and wraith mail are going to restore the ward and that works well with flawless edge since the more ward the fate maker has the more damage dealt the fate maker is going to deal amped up also really works well with bog down 
Now we just talked about what Amped Up does, but what does Bog Down do? Just a reminder, dealing non-status effect poison damage has a chance to create a Water Nova which soaks enemies, meaning those enemies are going to take increased damage from Lightning. Well, Amped Up, applying a Lightning status effect increases your movement speed and regenerates your ward. So we're going to be focused more on dealing out Lightning damage, which is going to work really well with each other. This build is going to be more focused on dealing both Lightning and Poison status effects and damage. And when you use the Blight Caller in general, I only recommend focusing on two or three different elements. Focusing on all of them is going to get confusing and you're going to be doing less than what you could with the Blight Caller. So I recommend focusing only on two or three. This build is going to focus on Lightning and Poison if you couldn't tell already. So now one of the next great combinations is Virulence and Spirit Swarm. Virulence status effect application chance is increased, and Spirit Swarm, which is the bread and butter of the Blight Caller, applying a status effect creates a Spirit Swarm companion that seeks out and damages nearby enemies. So that's actually perfect, which is one of the first skills you're going into in the Blight Caller, increasing the status effect application chance. And then the last one that you're going into, the Spirit Swarm, you're creating that Spirit Companion, which is dealing damage to enemies, which is absolutely awesome. On top of that, this deals status effect damage of the applied status effect damage type. Well, since you're already on this build focused on Poison and Lightning, you're going to be dealing that status effect damage, which is coinciding with your build very well. Now, the next skill on the Blight Caller that works well with a couple of skills on the Spore Warden is Hex Machina. Hex Machina, the fire rate is increased. On the Spore Warden, this works well with Quiver of Holding and Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye, the gun damage is going to be increased, and Quiver of Holding, the magazine size is increased. So with the fire rate being increased and not having to worry about reloading as much because your magazine size is increased, you're going to be dealing out more damage prior to reloading, which is always awesome because some guns do take a while to reload. So you're going to be dealing more damage per second. On top of that, with the gun damage being increased from Eagle Eye, you're going to be dealing even more damage. So your damage per second is going to be vastly increased with the combination of Hex Machina on the Blight Caller and Eagle Eye and Quiver of Holding from the Spore Warden. And then one of the last combinations that I want to talk about is going to be Toxicity plus Bullseye. We already talked about Toxicity, but again, applying a Poison Status effect increases your critical hit damage, companion damage, and action skill cooldown rate. And Bullseye, which we talked about, your gun critical hit chances increased. So you're going to be dealing even more damage with these two combined with each other because you have that gun critical hit damage and gun critical hit chances increased. Now let's talk about the required equipment for this build. It's no secret that I love Cape of Tides and for this build it's no different. Cape of Tides, you have a chance on your critical hits, your gun critical hits, to apply that soaked effect, which the enemy takes more damage from lightning, which is a focus of this build. So Cape of Tides is going to be required. Coupled well with that is going to be the Sword Splosion and the Live Wire, making sure that both of those guns are dealing lightning electric damage. But Live Wire is absolutely fantastic for taking out hordes of enemies. And Sword Splosion, a fantastic, one of the best shotguns in the game, is not only if you have the electric version going to deal increased damage with the build, but applying those sticky shots are going to deal an increased damage because the this Torg shotgun for every sticky attached to the enemy is actually going to deal even more damage. So Sword Explosion plus Cape of Tides plus this build dealing electric damage is really going to be crucial to this build. On top of that, spell-wise, I recommend Buffmeister and the electric version of Buffmeister. Buffmeister is going to increase the damage dealt of the Blightcaller Spore Warden build, and you're going to be dealing out that extra 
electric damage, which coincides with this build really nicely. I also recommend having at least one of these two guns that deal poison damage, the White Rider, which is a submachine gun, or the Message, which is a Torg pistol. Make sure both are dealing poison, and they can really coincide with this build well as well because you need something dealing poison damage to coincide with our poison electric focus on this build. So now that we've talked about the great combinations of this build, let's get into some more equipment that I love using because this build's already epic, but let's add some more epic weapons to this build. Last but not least, time to talk about the equipment that I recommend utilizing for the Blightcaller Spore Warden build. Of course, I did tell you that there were a few that are absolutely required for the build, but now I'm going to give you some of the other recommendations. For melee, utilize whatever you want. I'm utilizing the Diamond Guard. I find this is a nice melee weapon, but I don't melee too much. Then, you're going to need a poison dealing weapon. I prefer the White Rider. It's an absolutely fantastic legendary gun. It's a Dalia submachine gun legendary that deals poison damage. I also switch in the Message, which is another poison dealing gun. This is a Torg legendary pistol, and it absolutely tears through enemies as well. So I recommend utilizing one or both of these guns, the Message and the White Rider. Now, I already mentioned earlier in the video, the sword explosion is absolutely required for this build. It has to be the electric, the shock dealing sword explosion. It can tear through enemies with the sticky ammo. So you absolutely need the sword explosion. This is a Torg legendary shotgun. Then another gun I've already recommended, the live wire. Another great shock dealing weapon. This is a Dalia shock submachine gun and it can tear through hordes of enemies it works really nicely with the build now i also recommend having an auto magic that deals shock type damage we've already seen shock is perfect for the build this is a stoker legendary pistol and does a lot of damage with this build so i utilize this as well for the rings I have a ring, Sharksbane. This is going to increase ability damage. And what Sharksbane does is on critical hit, the ring's effectiveness is increased 33% for a short duration. The shark portion doesn't matter too much, but increasing the effectiveness of this ring by 33% is really nice when we're focused a lot on ability damage. And then I have the class ring, which while action skill is cooling down, effects are increased by 50%. So when my bog totem isn't active and it's cooling down, I'm going to be dealing more gun damage and of course spell critical hit chance and pistol critical hit chance. So that's going to make up for me not having the bog totem. For my shield, I'm going to have the Desperate Maced Wardu. Of course, I love Star Wars and Ode to that, but this is going to play a little bit more defensively for the Fate Maker. It's going to have a 15% chance to absorb bullets, and you can also regenerate 5% of your maximum health per second while the ward is full. Then, I've already recommended utilizing this. You've seen this in a ton of video, but the Cape of Tides is crucial to this build. We're going to be dealing a lot of lightning damage. We're going to be soaking a lot of enemies. So making sure all of our enemies are soaked so they can take more damage is extremely important. This means we can't use fire damage, but that's not going to matter because we're going to be dealing a ton of lightning damage. Then surging buff meisters, another piece of equipment I've told you you need for this build this is going to allow us to constantly be dealing electric damage this is extremely important for the build as well so there's a great spell the surging buff meister that's needed for this build and then i really like using the thurge as my necklace because whenever a spell is cast the remaining action skill cooldown is going to be reduced by 20 percent and spell damage is also going to be increased by 30% when the action skill is on cooldown. So this is absolutely great to have as well. Now let's get into some more gameplay and talk about the equipment and why this equipment is great for the build. I said it before, but I'm going to say it again. This Blightcaller Spore Warden build with the Blightcaller Focus is focused on dealing two elemental damage types. That's going to be Poison 
and it's going to be electric. The Blight Caller and Spore Warden are already great at dealing poison damage. You have to bring the electric to the party. That's why Sword Explosion with the electric damage dealing type, Live Wire are going to be great for the build. Sword Explosion, being a Torg, deals a ton of damage with the sticky ammo, and having the electric damage on that, coupled with Cape of Tides, is going to tear through enemies. Live Wire is great for hordes of enemies, so you're going to need that as well. The White Rider and Message are also great poison weapons that you can completely decimate enemies with. But outside of those, and make sure you have the Cape of Tides and Buffmeister dealing electric damage, Buffmeister is going to be great to deal increased electric damage to enemies and allow the Fate Maker to deal increased damage in general. Outside of those, bring your favorite electric and poison weapons to the party. You're going to be dealing a lot of electric and poison damage. You want to make sure that you have at least one of each damage type equipped. Electric is obvious. You're coupling that with Cape of Tides and you have a bunch of skills that work really well with electric. Poison, same thing. You have a lot of skills that couple really well with poison. And what's nice about the electric poison combination is electric is going to be great against shields and poison is going to be great against armor. So you're going to be tearing through enemy shields and armor very easily. Cape of Tides is going to make tearing through shields a cinch. Honestly, going through the Nightmare's shield portion of that boss battle was really easy. It was almost like child's play having the game on easy. But let me know what you think of this build in the comments section. Is your build of the Blight Caller Spore Warden similar, or is yours completely different? I hope you have a great rest of your day, and until next time, peace.